On just his third trip to China, Tesla's Elon Musk quoted, "By 2030, electric cars will make up a majority of new automobiles, and China will become the largest market for electric cars." But will the winner of China's EV battle belong to Tesla, or will it belong to someone else? On July 30. 2020, Li Auto became the second Chinese new energy vehicle maker to list on an American stock market, raising 11 billion dollars. And with a 21.3 percent stake in the company, Li Xiang, currently 39 years old, became a billionaire. He is dubbed China's Elon Musk. So who is he, and how did he do it? In today's video, we are going to talk about the rise of Li Xiang, China's Elon Musk and founder of Li Auto. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe and like the video. Let's begin. Li Xiang was born in 1981 in a northern Hebei province, and his entrepreneurial visions began at a very young age. His parents consisted of a school teacher and a director of a theater troupe, respectively. In the summer of 1999, three million Chinese students were bogging themselves down, getting ready for the national college entrance exam, an exam they prepared their whole childhood for. But 18-year-old Li Sheng decided school was not the right path for him, and instead of going to college, he decided to take a risk and look for opportunities on the internet. He was young and cocky, and he quoted. This is a great opportunity to start the business, and the chance may disappear in two years. You see, as a high school senior, he had already built a website advertising home graphic cards, and was making six thousand yuan per month, or about seven hundred and fifty-five dollars per month, which was a fortune at the time. He would spend at least five hours each day in front of the computer. In year two thousand. His first company was named PCPop.com, a consumer electronics portal, and he built it with a desire to prove himself. After dropping out of school, he quoted, "My teachers and relatives thought I was good for nothing because of my academic performance. I started a personal website to avoid being looked down upon. Plus, my website was making more than the monthly income of my parents added together." Li Sheng. Was ruthless in building his website. He would wake up at 5 a.m. daily to take advantage of early morning traffic from competitors. PCPop.com helped Li Sheng earn over a hundred thousand RMB, or about fourteen thousand three hundred and fifty dollars U.S. at that time, which was almost ten times more than what his parents made. And he decided then and there that he had to go for it. He decided to move to Beijing by the end of 2001. Now times were not always easy for him, as in 2000 the internet bubble burst and many IT companies went bankrupt. At one time, Li lost all the advertisements on his website, but he never thought of giving up. He would throw all the money he had back into supporting the website. Now Li was gifted with some strengths. But he also had some great weaknesses. He wasn't the greatest manager, and at one point, 50 editors left the company, and the website stopped operations temporarily. Upon later self-reflection, he quoted, "I have the typical personality of people born in the 1980s. The good side is that I am always active and optimistic, but I am also too concerned about myself." And tend to be unconscious of other people's feelings. He was a hard worker that would work nonstop. He would do 30 push-ups before going to bed at 1:30 a.m. and got up at 7:30 a.m. to eat before going to work. But because he was inexperienced in managing a growing staff, this essentially led to a bottleneck in growth and the end of his time at PC Pop. But Lee was not discouraged. And decided to give startups another shot. And in 2005, he decided to set up Auto Home, which was a site peddling automotive products and services. It became China's largest online forum portal. But again, 
His inexperience in managing others would prove to be his Achilles heel, and he decided to give up his CEO role to someone who had better professional credentials. Meet Tin Zi. Tsinghua and Harvard graduate Tin Zi joined Li Shang's auto home as president in 2007. Chin Ji was working as a consultant at McKinsey and Company when he first read Steve Jobs' famous Stanford commencement speech, which announced, Stay hungry, stay foolish. And he felt he was wasting his life and sought a change, so he decided to join the Chinese startup at that time. The change in control worked out well, and four short years later, by 2009, Auto Home was the market leader in China for online platforms, commanding a 90% market share. However, they did suffer from some bad timing as the global financial crisis hit in 2007 and 2008, and defaults in advertising payments by manufacturers caused a lot of financial difficulties. Thus, more than half of Auto Home shares were sold to Telstra, an Australian telecommunications company. Telstra would eventually list on the New York Stock Exchange in 2013, valuing the company at the close of trading to almost US $3 billion. Li Sheng was suddenly worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and Auto Home continued to thrive afterwards. The downside was that Li lost majority control of the company that he founded. Young, rich, and itching for adventure, Li Sheng thought a lot about his next career move at that time. Now, Li Sheng was always fascinated by the founder of Tesla, Elon Musk, and was actually one of the earliest consumers of the Tesla vehicle in China. In 2012, he got his first Tesla Model S, and he believed that electric vehicles were the future. He decided he wanted to set up his own EV, but he noted that the infrastructure for electric vehicles were so poor at that time. A fun fact is about one of Lee Auto's current competitors, Neo. Neo's founder, William Lee, had actually wanted Lee Shang to become a co-founder of the EV firm in 2014. But due to strategic differences, Lee Shang turned William Lee, founder of Neo, down. However, Li Shang still invested $15 million into NEO as one of its founding investors. So if NEO does well, Li Shang and Li Auto certainly will not be unhappy. By 2015, Li decided to resign from Auto Home to pursue his next great entrepreneurial adventure and set up Che He Jia, which means car and home in Chinese, which was later renamed to Li Auto. But the path to success was very difficult, and it took almost four years for the new EV maker to deliver its first car. Part of the reason for the difficulty was that when it was first founded in July 2015, China's stock market bubble had just crashed, and anyone pursuing financing had extreme difficulty. Li Auto also had many strategy shifts. In the beginning, it aimed to develop low-speed small electric vehicles, SEVs, followed by SUVs, or sports utility vehicles later on. But by 2018, they decided to abandon two years' worth of small electric vehicle manufacturing facilities, battery packs, and intellectual property due to regulatory problems and also a market that didn't feel there was a need. Li Auto decided to change strategic decisions, cut their losses early, and pulled out completely, focusing on the SUV market. Finally, by December 2019, Li Auto finally delivered its first and only SUV model, which was the Li One, and things have been progressing very well since. Unlike most other electric vehicle makers, Li Auto specializes in plug-in hybrid vehicles, which can be powered by either gasoline or electricity. Due to this hybrid powertrain, it eliminates range anxiety. It is powered by a 1.2-liter turbocharged three-cylinder internal combustion engine at the front and an electric motor at the rear. Since the gas engine provides power to the electric motor, 
The car can operate even when customers have no easy access to charging infrastructure, which is certainly one of the problems for many of China's EV drivers. The company believes that by doing this, it can accelerate the adoption of electric vehicles in China by offering a more affordable EV with a range comparable to gas-powered automobiles. It targets the growing Chinese middle-class market and encourages them to drive cleaner, smarter, and larger vehicles. The Li1 SUV is available with six or seven seats in three rows, with a starting price of around 50,000 US. Similar to Tesla, Li Auto owns its own distribution channels and sells its cars to consumers directly rather than using dealerships and they use their mobile apps as one of their largest sales channels. Backed by Meituan and ByteDance, China's biggest consumer service apps, both of which own TikTok, in July 2020, the company IPO'd on the New York Stock Exchange and Li instantly became a billionaire. The company's stock price rose rapidly from its $11.50 IPO price and they used the proceeds to invest heavily in AI, self-driving technology, smart technology, and to eliminate range anxiety. In Q3 of 2020, Li also teamed up with NVIDIA to further promote R&D in autonomous driving technology. As of March 2021, Li Auto already has 12,579 Li-1 units delivered year-to-date, making cumulative deliveries close to 50,000 units. And in early 2021, it announced the establishment of an R&D hub in Shanghai. Li Auto has the strongest margin profile compared to its competitors, with a vehicle margin at 19.8%. For comparison purposes, it is able to generate almost 85% of NEO's gross profit with just 60% of the revenues. By solving range anxiety and focusing on the user experience, integrated apps, cloud-based updates, Li Auto is poised to be a leader in China's growing EV space. Today, Li Shang continues to improve and make better strategic decisions the forever dreamer wants to make his company become the leader in China's EV industry. His failures and successes in his prior businesses all make him the person he is today. You see, he didn't follow the traditional path. And he didn't give up in the face of criticism, financial difficulty, and setbacks. He believed in himself. The only question left is, can he do it? I hope you enjoyed this video. Our channel focuses on inspirational stories that focus on daily 1% improvement. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification on the right. So. Do you think Li Shang and Li Auto can be the number one leader in China's EV space? Drop a comment below and we'll be sure to address it in the next video. Until then, see you next time.